All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back again with another video. I feel like I haven't made a video in a while, you know, just been busy playing games and stuff, you know, stuff that gamers do. Um, but what I want to talk about in this video was uh, the announcement of the remake for Max Payne 1 and 2. Now, obviously, this isn't news anymore. It happened a few days ago, and I was excited about it then, but, you know, couldn't really bother to make a video about it at the time. I was just too busy. But And the only reason I'm making a video about it now is because I would just honestly wanted to express my excitement for this, for this, you know, these two projects being remade. I'm excited about it. I look forward to it. I'm hyped. I'm a big fan of uh, the whole Max Payne series. Right. So going to read this statement from the Max from the uh, Remedy Entertainment um, investors page and then kind of break down a few things and give my thoughts on this. Right. So uh, it says Remedy Entertainment enters agreement with Rockstar Games for new Max Payne one and two project Re Remedy Entertainment. The creators of Max Payne are pleased to announce that they will remake the iconic Max Payne and Max Payne to the fall of Max Payne video games in a new development agreement with Rockstar Games. The relationship between Rocks, between Remedy and Rockstar Games dates back to the original release of the critically acclaimed Max Payne uh, and Max Payne 2, the fall of Max Payne um, games developed by Remedy and published by Rockstar. Both games left an indelible mark in pop culture lauded for their neo-noir atmosphere, groundbreaking story, storytelling, and bullet time gunplay. Going to skip down a few paragraphs. Uh, Frank Hauser, well, Frank Hauser, <laughs> um, Sam Hauser, you know, uh, from one of the founders of Rockstar stated how excited he is. Going to skip down a few paragraphs. It says, under the development agreement signed today, Remedy will develop the games as a single title for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S using its proprietary, uh, proprietary Northlight game engine, which is Remedy's latest game engine and not the engine that um, Rockstar use obviously because they're they're two different studios. Uh, with Max Payne three, Rockstar uh, had used um, God, can't even remember what the name of that damn um, that engine is, but they use their engine for that. Uh, Remedy will be using their engine. Um, it says the game's development budget will be financed by Rockstar. We assume that you know since they're since they're the publisher. The size of which will be in line with a typical Remedy AAA game production. That part is a little bit interesting to me. I could be reading into that a little bit more, but I'm going to speak on that after I'm done this paragraph. Under the agreement, Remedy has a royalty opportunity after Rockstar has recouped its development, development, marketing, and other costs for distributing and publishing the game. So the only reason I find that line interesting, where it says that uh, the size of the budget will be in line with typical Remedy AAA game production is because when you look at, you know, the, the when you look at Remedy's AAA games, they seem to be budget-wise a little bit less than average um, versus other AAA games in the industry, right? Um, and we know that based on the fact that they've, Admitted to, and there's several scenarios where Remedy takes several shortcuts, right, when developing their games. It's one of the re it's one of the reasons why, if you look at Remedy's games, the enemies are usually generic and faceless, right? And because that's a shortcut when it comes to game development, right? If if you had to, you know, create a whole bunch of unique enemies and enemy types, that takes a lot more time, a lot more developers, a lot more money. So when you look at Control, for example, like it's just these, you know, it, it's like, yeah, they like that paranormal lane that they seem to go in with like Control and Quantum Break, but that's, and, and, and even uh, and even um, uh, Alan Wake, that seems to be their bag, but that's also because they're trying to like take uh, some shortcuts and they're, they, you know, it's a lot easier to um, design these ghosts and like these paranormal enemies than to design actual like humans and you know um with unique features and unique enemies and a whole bunch of types even their games like don't have a whole bunch of different types of enemies right um and if you remember with with uh quantum break i believe it was even one of their designers had come out and mentioned um there was a there was this whole conversation about what was it when the reload animation right uh, when you go, when you look at other games and uh, but develop, made by other developers, 
they have like an actual reload animation. You see the magazine drop out. You see you can actually see the magazine go in the gun. And Remedy, because they've been uh, a little bit, they're a smaller studio essentially than your other AAA developers, right? They haven't had enough developers in each like division um, to actually, you know, have things like that to accommodate that level of detail. So it, that's just interesting to me when they say the typical Remedy AAA game production because the typical Remedy AAA game production budget isn't even that high to begin with. I'm not saying it's like, you know, I'm not saying they're like Platinum Games budget, but they're, you know, they're, I, I think they're, might they might be a little bit lower than average. And being that Rockstar and Take-Two have all this money, um, you, you know, I'm not saying they won't give them all the money they need. I assume they will, but it's stating that this is going to be their typical remedy and like eh, they should be able to like kind of open the, you know, the open the, the checkbook and you know, go a little bit over the typical remedy AAA game budget even though I don't think a Max Payne 1 and 2 uh budget is requires that much right even though of course they're going to be remaking things completely from the ground up the foundation of the game and what they want to make is is still there right you know it's a lot more expensive to make an, a brand new ip from scratch than it is to remake a game there's certain things yeah you have to re completely rebuild the game but there's certain things as far as like the the research and the um you know, the uh, just like a lot of pre-production stuff when it comes to conceptualizing what this game is, you kind of get to skip a, a few steps, right? It's not like you're starting from a complete blank page, right? But that's, you know, like I said, I could be looking a little bit too deep into that. Not that it'll affect how the game, you know, uh, turns out. I'm sure they're going to do an amazing job. It makes sense that Remedy is working on this and not Rockstar. Uh, Remedy did make the best Max Payne games. They were the they were the original creators. Uh, Rockstar just made Max Payne three, um, and even though I like Max Payne three, Max Payne one and two are definitely my favorites. Right, Max Payne three naturally had better gameplay because I mean the time the the time difference between when these games were released. But as far as like story goes and uh but and the thing is even though i'm somebody who doesn't like to play a whole bunch of old games max Payne and and i believe most games don't age well i'm somebody who i know like a lot of retro fans love to believe like oh these games are evergreen lies 90 percent of games do not age well at least you know games from uh you know the the 90s and early 2000s i don't believe those games are those games uh, age well. I think the games we've gotten this gen and last gen, 20 years from now or something like that, those are probably going to age well. But the ones like from 20 years ago, no, they age horribly, horribly. But Max Payne 1 and 2, I've like literally downloaded those on PC um, and then played them and, it, and it's fine. I think on controller, I'm not sure how it would be on controller right now, but mouse and keyboard still makes Max pain one and two playable so um yeah so i'm i'm, I'm excited for 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 this uh i'm glad the originators are working on it and not rockstar like i said max pain 3 was okay but it wasn't it was a little bit too max pain max pain one and two was just very dark very broody i like that about it and some of these parts in max pain 3 where you're out in the in this out in the sun and it's daytime and max ha he's bald and has a hawaiian shirt on i'm like eh, this feels weird you know it, it just feels odd the the <laughs> the best part of max pain 3 was the flashback that made you feel like you were in max pain 1 and 2 or the parts that were just dark like when he was in brazil in the slums those were those were the best parts um so yeah, and, and one of the things that's still, like, is bizarre to me, one of the most puzzling thing about the Max Payne trilogy, uh, well, more specifically, Max Payne 3, is Max Payne 3 didn't sell what it should have for what Max Payne is. I mean, you have this, this, this great-looking game. It has good storytelling. It has amazing shooting. And for some reason, 
I think the last reported numbers of Max Payne 3 was like 5 million. And it sold like 440K, I think, in the first week when L.A. Noir sold more. Because L.A. Noir came out before Max Payne. If you, I think a few years before Max Payne. Max Payne 3. Max Payne 3 came out later. And you would you would assume like a game like Max Payne 3 would be more attractive and more alluring to the general public than a, a game like L.A. Noir, which seemed to be for a certain audience. It seemed to be a little bit niche because of the style of game it is. But Max Payne 3 seems to under seem to underperform next to it. And I don't think no major game launched next to Max Payne 3. It was just very odd. I'm like, it's it's an it's it's a great game. Like it's 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 great. That gameplay is is tr is definitely phenomenal. So it always puzzled me how that game did not sell more, especially when people learned that Rockstar were were uh, developing it. I mean, like look at everything else Rockstar makes. Even though Max Payne isn't necessarily uh, you know synonymous with the Rockstar brand, they were always the publishers. Even though they're not synonymous with the Rockstar brand, you would think that when people see that Rockstar who made Red Dead and who made all these GTAs for making a Max Payne game, you would think that would like translate to automatically boost um, boost the sales. Now, granted, probably Max Payne 3 sold. I, I don't know how much Max Payne 1 and 2 sold, but Max Payne 3 might have outsold both of them because of the growth in the gaming market. Either way, all I'm saying is that was a little bit shocking to me um, that Max Payne 3 didn't do bigger numbers. A game like that should sell 10 million bare minimum. I don't know what people were doing if they weren't buying Max Payne 3 when it came out. Um, but I'm excited about this. Uh, I think this also points to the fact that Remedy needs a publisher. Remedy ne needs to be bought. Trust me, I'm not saying any of the big three. I'm not, I'm not saying they need to be bought by a Microsoft or a PlayStation. N no, I'm, I'm not. You know, Y'all know I'm not on that train. But it's been very clear, as I alluded to earlier, about them having like some trouble in development and always having to take shortcuts. Like their games, you can tell their games are always like right, just a little bit from being like amazing. Remedy has never made a bad game, but they have never made a game that had like blown your mind or blown like, yo, this game is it. This is this is their 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 masterpiece. I don't, in my opinion, Remedy has never made a bad game, but they have never made a masterpiece. And I think the what's what's keeping them from making that one that masterpiece is the is the funding, the resources from a from being uh, attached to a publisher. So, um, you know, that's 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 my take on that. I think a, a publisher would would push them over over the edge to that territory where they're to to where they're actually making that masterpiece because i don't think it's talent i i honestly think it's funding for for them so um we'll see um you know this is exciting times they they you know Matt, uh, alan wake 2 is coming out um they're making they're working on these uh these uh you know max Payne 1 and 2 projects it's going to look i'm sure it's going to look phenomenal um it, it's next gen only I'm sure they're going to utilize all the, you know, the, the the current technology, and we're probably not going to see this for like, I would say maybe another three years. Um, so yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Big fan of Max Payne. Let me know what y'all think about this. I'll catch y'all on the next video, whenever that is. Hit the like button, hit the notification bell, uh, and uh, follow me on Twitter if you're not. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.